What is up everyone, welcome back to a brand new video. In today's video, we are going to be unboxing and reviewing the Secure SQSW1 Mini Intelligent DIY Spot Welder. This is a spot welder that's made for making your own custom DIY electric skateboard or personal electric vehicle battery packs. Essentially, if you don't know what a spot welder is, you use it to weld the cells together in your pack so that you can arrange them into a larger battery than an individual cell. One of the biggest advantages to this alternative to a standard spot welder is its compact size and the fact that you don't need to build it. From what I've heard from people that are actually experienced with this kind of thing, this is a very simple spot welder to use and it's great for beginners. It also has a ton of really cool features and we're gonna walk you through those in a little bit. But for now, we're gonna be talking about what comes inside the box. So the biggest thing inside the box is the actual spot welder itself. This is a pretty compact one. As you can see, there's a knob right here and an LCD display to let you know your current settings of welding. Personally, I think that it feels super dense and super high quality. And considering that it was at this price point, I didn't have high expectations for the quality. The spot welder is powered by an external power source. You can use a LiPo battery pack. Around 10 to 14 volts is what they recommend doing. The Secure spot welder also comes with a foot pedal that can be used to activate the welder. So essentially, you set that on the floor, you place the probes on the top of the battery that you want to weld, and then you click down with your foot and it'll do the weld at that moment. Another accessory that they have is this version of the welding probe and essentially how this one works is that you push down and it's spring loaded and when you hit the bottom of that spring it'll make the weld at that point. The welder also comes with some nickel strip to get you started, some cell holders to use for holding your cells while welding, and a couple of other extra tips for welding for when yours get old and used. Now there's this huge set of thick wires and these are what the welding current will come through. These go into the out port on the spot welder and these are the ends of the probes that you'll hold. They've got some super beefy wires to handle lots of current and be sturdy enough to make the welds that you want to make. If you want to use either of the two accessories, the spring loaded welding tip or the foot pedal, there's a port on the side of the welder which is super easy to use and very intuitive. To set up the output section of your welder, it's pretty simple. There's just an XT60 port and you'll plug in one of those two thick wires into it and that's pretty much it. It's that simple. So that's everything that comes inside the Secure Spot Welding Kit. There's a ton of accessories, lots of cool stuff in there for that $219.99 price point. Overall, I was really impressed with the quality of everything, but now we're going to get into the actual testing of this product, and we actually have no experience with building batteries or spot welders, so we sent this off to our good buddy Eastgate Alex, who is an electric skateboard pack or personal electric vehicle pack builder. You can reach him on Instagram if you're interested in getting an electric skateboard battery pack. We use him all the time for any custom packs that we need. He has great prices. He can use pretty much any cell that you want and he has really great turnaround times unlike some of the other battery builders out there. So make sure to go check out Eastgate Alex and here is his review as someone who uses a spot welder on a daily basis of this spot welder. So today we're gonna to be testing the Secure Welder. Uh, interesting note, it goes into standby mode if you leave it on um, and don't weld for some time, which I did as I set up to film this. So we're gonna be testing some Recycled cells I have welding 0.1 thickness pure nickel, 0.15 thickness pure nickel, and 0.2 thickness pure nickel. Most applications are probably going to use 0.15, some may use 0.2, depending on your current uh, needs. 0.15 should be pretty standard across the board. I'm going to put the welder at 20 milliseconds for the 0.15. This may be a little high, but we will find out pretty quickly where we're at. Uh, I'm also using the auto pulse feature, so I wait an allotted time, and after that time is up, it welds itself. So let's see where we're at. So we got pretty good tearing on the nickel and uh, it's left on top of the cell, that is what we want. So 
20 is definitely about right for point 0.1. So for point 0.15, we're going to go up to 25. Also, I'm using a pretty long time delay because I'm unfamiliar with the welder. I don't want anything to happen. So it looks pretty good. Tearing it, tore. You could probably go a little bit hotter, but you can see tear marks as well as in the nickel holes, which is what you want to see as you pull it apart. So 25 milliseconds is about right. Then for the point two, now point two is a challenge for a lot of welders. We're going to turn it all the way up to 32 because we definitely want this to stick and we do need a pretty good bit of power for that to happen. Probe stuck to the nickel a little bit. We do get good, a good tear on the uh, one side, but not on the positive side, I believe that was. Turn this down a little bit. Let's go to 29 so you can do your first weld and then move your negative probe and do your second weld and that will penetrate more on the positive probe which is generally speaking the one that uh, is slightly weaker. So we still didn't get much tearing on the positive uh, probe end uh, but not much tearing so I do think this is probably too low. Also after, I'm not sure if it's how many welds or if it, there's a number, tells you the power volts and amps that uh, were coming out of the welder on that weld, which is pretty cool to see. So we're still looking for better results with 0.2. So I went up to 34 milliseconds and I'm going to do the double with the positive terminal, Let's see what we get. So we do get good tearing on the negative. Positive is now leaving a little bit, but really not a lot. However, you get three solid welds on there. That nickel is not gonna be going anywhere. So I bumped it up to 35 micro milliseconds for the pulse. Two welds on here. So those are pretty hot, probably too hot that you're gonna end up with a failure prematurely. However, just for experiment's sake, we're now gonna turn it down and we're going to put, uh, we're gonna go to 24, let's just try 24. And we're gonna put point one on top of this. This would be a sort of realistic scenario of making tabs for your BMS as you are building a battery. That felt all right, but that probably wasn't enough. Well, you got a pretty healthy tear on one side, uh, the negative side, of course. Positive side did not, so you definitely want to throw in a couple extra welds. Let's just go ahead and let's do two full welds on the point one stacked. So now trying to remove double welded point one. We get tons of tear. That's exactly what you want to see. Perfect. The focus. Lots of tear on there. And then you can see a very jagged edge on the nickel. And let's just also go ahead and check what the nickel looks like from underneath. That's pretty good shape. That's about what you want. If there's nothing left behind, way too weak. You always want the nickel to tear because that is much less likely to fail during, uh, you know, your application, whether that's a skateboard or scooter or whatever you're putting this battery in. Welds can break as your pack jostles around. Nickel is highly unlikely to tear. So that's what you're shooting for. You want the nickel to have to tear yeah, it's pretty well stuck on there. All in all, pretty happy with this welder. Um, it does do 0.2. It's about as thick as you're ever gonna need for 
any sort of hobby project and any PEV, that's about what you need. Maybe uh, as far as power supply goes, you might want a second LiPo or um, you have probably two smaller ones than this just to spread out the load. Make sure you have an ample amount of power. The electrodes I do like. Um, they're long, so they're a little cumbersome, but I'm sure I'd get used to it if I welded with this constantly. However, it does also come with these, uh, this set of electrodes, which you would put two um, tips in there, and then as you press down, this clicks the same way the foot pedal would click if you were not welding on auto, which I was welding on, um, since that's just what I find to be most comfortable and sort of the quickest moving for me and how I weld. But yeah, it is cool to see that it comes with all of that. And it also comes with two extra sets of tips, which is good because as you weld, they dull a little bit um, and become you know shorter and duller. So you sharpen them and then let them pull them out a little bit further. And eventually you'll need to replace them. But uh, all in all, very good welder especially for the price. In conclusion, I think that the Secure Spot Welder is a great first spot welder for anyone looking at making their very first DIY lithium ion battery pack. It's considerably more compact and physically capable than anything else available on Amazon or similar sites for that price point. And because of its high quality, it's also gonna last a lot longer than those. The UI is super simple and easy to navigate, meaning that you can start welding in little to no time, even with minimal experience. It's also so nice that they included a wide variety of accessories so that you can learn how to weld in multiple different ways and choose which one suits you best. Specs wise, from the test, we've seen that the welder can handle 0.1 and 0.15 thickness nickel with ease, and it can also handle 0.2 with a little extra power. With most applications, this is gonna be plenty enough because they use 0.15. Something to note about this welder is that you'll need a good quality LiPo power source. We recommend using two batteries in parallel, especially when you're welding a lot at once. You're gonna need a lot more power to keep your batteries from overheating. But in conclusion, this is a fantastic welder for the price point, and if you're interested in getting one, we'll have a link down in the description to the Secure SQW1 lithium ion battery pack spot welder. If you enjoyed the video, please let us know by liking the video and subscribing to our YouTube channel for more DIY electro skateboard content. As always, thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you guys in the next video.